Epilepsy is one of the most common serious neurological disorders and your chance of having at least one seizure in your lifetime is 10 percent. And about a third of the people who have one seizure will go on and have epilepsy. Uh, according to the World Health Organization, epilepsy accounts for 1 percent of the global burden of disease, which is equivalent to breast cancer in women and lung cancer in men. Uh, one of the major problems that epilepsy is such a serious uh, health burden uh, is that one-third of people with epilepsy have what's called drug-resistant epilepsy. Their seizures don't respond to the usual medications. And uh, the tragedy uh, in the United States, and this is probably true in most of the industrialized world, is that only about 1% or less of patients with drug-resistant epilepsy are referred to specialized epilepsy centers. The American Academy of Neurology uh, has what are called um, quality measures for, uh, for performance. Uh, and one of the quality measures uh, is that after patients fail two trials of appropriate anti-seizure drugs, uh, that they be referred to an epilepsy center. And uh, that's the accepted now uh, 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 definition of drug resistant because if patients fail two drug trials, their chances of becoming seizure free with an additional drug is less than 3%. Uh, why these patients are not being referred uh, is a mystery. Uh, personally, I suspect that some of it has to do with the fact that for many years uh, we were promoting uh, epilepsy surgery as being a highly successful treatment for patients with certain types of drug-resistant epilepsy. Uh, and I think that the medical community, particularly primary care physicians and general neurologists, believe that all epilepsy centers do is surgery. And they think that their patient is not a surgical candidate or their patient is not interested in surgery, so they don't refer the patient. Well, the fact is uh, that often uh, patients are surgical candidates when their physicians think they're not. Uh, so they deserve to be evaluated. Uh, or they may think they're not interested until they talk to a specialist at an epilepsy center. But the more important thing is that epilepsy centers do much more than surgery. So there are many reasons why patients uh, appear to be drug resistant. First of all, they may not be drug resistant. They may have pseudo drug resistance uh, so that they're not really taking their medications properly. Or they have lifestyle issues uh, like constant uh, sleep deprivation or stress. Uh, or substance abuse that are causing them to have seizures, or they're taking the wrong drugs. Uh, and at an epilepsy center, uh, we can usually sort these things out uh, and determine that the patients can be controlled with drugs. Uh, sometimes we find out they don't have epilepsy at all. Uh, they have uh, most commonly something called psychogenic non-epileptic seizures and they've been treated for years as epilepsy and they don't have epilepsy. Uh, when it turns out that they really are drug resistant and they really do have epilepsy, then there are other treatments that can be used. Uh, there's ketogenic diet, there's behavioral therapies. Uh, we now have neuromodulation like uh, vagus nerve stimulation, um, there's also responsive neurostimulation from implanted electrodes that uh, we found uh, is highly advantageous in reducing seizure frequency. Uh, and then surgery. Uh, and surgery is becoming more and more uh, applicable to more and more different types of epilepsy. Uh, and with the right patients, they have a much greater chance of becoming completely seizure free. So uh, I think often uh, treating physicians will think that if a patient comes in and is having many seizures a week, or sometimes even many seizures a day, and they put them on medication, and now they're only having rare seizures, 
that that's good enough. But even with one or two seizures a year, a patient is disabled by that. And, and the, uh, uh, the mantra should be uh, for every patient with epilepsy, no seizures, no side effects, as soon as possible. Because the sooner uh, the seizures are stopped, uh, the more likely we can avoid the uh, irreversible psychological and social disabilities that are associated with seizures. Uh, so another um, uh, unfortunate fact is that when patients are referred uh, for surgery, for instance, uh, the average time in the United States between the onset of epilepsy and referral is over 22 years which is often too late to allow us to rehabilitate the patient once seizures have been controlled by surgery or by something else. Uh, because the patients have gone through adolescence and early adulthood and they don't have the vocational skills and they don't have the interpersonal skills to uh, leave home uh, and get a job and get married and pay taxes and they remain dependent on their families and on societies. And it's a tragedy. Uh, and I think epilepsy, more than any other uh, disorder or disease that neurologists treat, uh, are not adequately managed. Uh, and uh, the best place to do this is an epilepsy, full service epilepsy center that has a multidisciplinary staff not a single epileptologist, but uh, specialized psychologists and psychiatrists and counselors and neuroradiologists and clinical neurophysiologists and neurosurgeons who can all uh, concentrate their efforts on, on a patient. And even if uh, the epilepsy center is unable to uh, control all the patient seizures, which unfortunately is you know, too often the case. They have people who are trained to help patients deal with having epilepsy to improve their quality of life that isn't available in the community. So I think anybody with epileptic seizures uh, who have failed two anti-seizure drugs and who ha still have seizures that are interfering with school or work or interpersonal relations deserve a consultation at a full service epilepsy center. Not a neurologist or an epileptologist, but a full service epilepsy center.